And why do we care? Again, at the beginning of every le lecture or every new chapter, let's talk about why we care. Why? Because it relates back to materials properties, things like density. That depending, you know, we have these anisotropies just built into the structure of the crystal. Things, the bonds, the average spacing between atoms is different along different directions in three dimensions. And so that's a source of anisotropy. Now, anisotropy, this is an important word. You need to know this. Iso means same, static or same. So isotropy means same in all directions. Anisotropy means different depending on the direction. And I will use those words, and you do need to know them. I can pretty much guarantee that if you don't have that straight in your head, you'll get the exact wrong answer on an exam, homeworks. They're it's one of those vocab words in material science. So the crystal orientation, the way that the bonds are, if there's a directionality to the bonds, all of those things relate back to properties. And then most important, perhaps, have I ever heard like these rules, like you, or you know, kind of like an adage, like heard it for like acting or writing or kind of more fuzzy studies, like, well, once you know the rules, then you can break them. You know, once you know the rules and about writing, you can go and break them and have some literary license. Once we know how the crystal structure is supposed to be, then defects make sense. And defects are the main way, again, engineering materials, changing them. Defects are the primary way that we change the properties of the material. Okay, so why? Why do we even have this arrangement? Why is there an order? Well, let's say we didn't. Let's say it was amorphous. And we can get amorphous structures, but what happens then is that the average bond length ends up being greater than what it wants to be. So the energy is higher for the system. They're very complex structures, and overall the energy is higher then. So things will arrange themselves in periodic arrays. We call this a crystalline versus um, amorphous. So when we talk about these, we'll talk about amorphous solids and crystalline solids. Amorphous, no short range or long range order. Crystalline, we do have short range order. So this regular packing in these 3D arrays lowers the energy, keeps those average spacing between the nearest neighbors at their equilibrium length. So we see this in crystals. You know, I just realized it's probably hard for you to see it. Oh, that's a bit more than I wanted. Uh, there's got to be a way. Okay, epic fail. Which way is better? All dark? No. All dark? Okay. You guys can't sleep on me. No sleeping. That's fair. There we go. Oh, I did find the magic sequence of buttons. Okay. Okay, so you guys have seen this in crystals, right? We can take, you know, like we're basically cleaving along specific crystallographic planes when we're taking a single crystal, like a diamond cutting, anything like that. There's special planes that will automatically want to do, want to break along, right? You know, you chisel something away like a ceramic or a metal, and it'll just break off a whole piece. And so you see this three-dimensional structure in macro crystals. Well, it's the same kind of thing going on, but on a much smaller scale in metallic crystals. So we have this three-dimensional arrangement. So with metallic crystals, they tend to be very densely packed to lower their energy. So here, if only one element is present, so again, metallic alloys, tend to be the bulk one metal. There are definitely exceptions, but things like steel, like a plain carbon steel is like half a percent carbon and maybe a little bit of other stuff. So still 95, 98, 99% iron. So the atomic radii are all the same. The distances between the atoms are all the same. Metallic bonding, again, it's not directional. So we just have these cation cores kind of cushioned by the sea of electrons. And so they have the simplest crystal structures. 
Okay, so let's look at four of those. These simple cubic and the one hexagonal structure that I sent out to you in the video. Okay, so what's the green one? <laughs> yeah, face center cubic, right? There's a center ion on each face. And then the blue? Body center. What about the yellow? Hexagonal close packed. And we'll talk about where that close packed part of the name comes from. So those are unit cells. Now a unit cell is not strictly the set of atoms that are a little bit darker, but really the part of the, um, in that block, in that, in that cube, that's actually, it's not actually a full atom in the unit cell. And you think about a unit cell the way, in three dimensions, the way you would a tile on a floor in two dimensions. It's the repeating unit that you just place one, then one, then one. So we're gonna see that. Now, the two key numbers associated with a unit cell are first, the atomic packing factor. So this was on that question we had, where, um, this is basically a measure of how densely packed it is. So it's kind of like a percentage of the unit cell that's actually taken up by atoms. The coordination number is another important number, and that is the number of nearest neighbors. So we have this regular array. So any atom in the structure is gonna have a certain number of nearest neighbors. So here for the body-centered cubic, you think of, if you imagine being the atom at the center of that unit cell, You've got four on top and four on the bottom. So that, this one's coordination number would be eight. What about a face-centered cubic? So we have this guy here. So where's his nearest neighbor? Here, 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 and then one in front and one in back. So its number is six. And the coordination number of the hexagonal close pack is also six. You can see it like if you're this atom here. would be 12, oh, the layer of three above and three below, yeah. One, two, three, yeah, you're right. So then for, yeah, I'm thinking of something else. So for face centered, we have those four, and then, um, I don't like this drawing. These guys here, the, trying to, so these four, and then the four above and the four below. Thank you. Okay, so what we'll see is that metals, as we put the, they base most of them resolve into at room temperature having.